plastic and we're going to cut it about approximately 10 by 10. Uh, what we're going to do with that is we're going to draw a bunch of pre-preg circles that we're going to use. We're going to try and keep them clear of the edge so that we don't end up with epoxy coming out the edge of our envelope. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold that envelope in half and then we're going to draw out our three repair patches. And so there's the three inch, there's the two and a quarter, Uh, there should be an inch and a half in there as well. And then we're going to put in three little three-quarter inch uh, patches that we're going to use as our first couple of layers. And we'll have one as a spare in case we have problems. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is draw some straight lines on the big circle showing which way the warp fibers are going to go. Very important. Then we're going to get some spare 10-ounce fiberglass. Uh, make sure the edge of the material is nice and clean so that when we lay it up against the edge of the envelope, we have a nice solid edge. Now we're going to flip it upside down so we can't see our uh, circles anymore. That way when we wet it out and the material becomes uh, completely transparent, we'll be able to see those circles and we'll know that it's properly uh, and fully wetted out. So again, we're going to very accurately uh, mix up our A and here comes our B. Uh, and so we're going to have that so that we can bring it over and uh, slide it into our envelope uh, and wet out the uh, patches. They're not exactly, you know, uh, a proper full uh, prepreg, but it kind of gives us the idea as to what working with prepregs might be like. Uh, again, I'm going to be super picky here, make sure I've got every last little drop in there. Uh, the amount of material that we're going to make should be able to be split between three people. So make sure that when you've got your um, 50 grams mixed up, that uh, you share it out with two other people. So, there it is. I'm going to pour it into the envelope, close her up. Again, about a third of a, a kit, which should be more than adequate, and then we're just going to work it in with the squeegee. So again, just nice, even distribution over the whole of the uh, product. Oh, look at that. I even got some squishy coming out the bottom, so that's not so good. Uh, yeah, not so good. But we want to make sure that we can fully see every circle and that way we're absolutely sure that it's fully wetted out. If you put the circles on top, you can actually kind of rub them off. And we don't want to do that. So make sure your circles are on the bottom. And we're going to cut in. And we're going to cut each one of those circles out. I will provide you with a, a bag. And so once each of the circles gets cut, we're going to very carefully keep the two sides, the two pieces of plastic on either side, uh, on our, our, our patch. And we're going to move those into the plastic bag similar to what we did the day before uh, with our layup for our uh, um, sandwich lid. Okay, so we're going to do that for each of them. Get all those little patches. The little guys can be a little bit more work, a little harder to get a nice finished product, but uh, take your time and you can end up with a, a nice bag full of pre-preg repairs. Put your name on the bag so we know whose bag is whose, and it's off to the freeze. We're going to pull it out of the vacuum bag, again putting the, uh, the lid down to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. And we're going to very carefully peel off the uh, outer layer of perforated ply and uh, breather ble bleeder. Now, we're going to find center on our sandwich. Notice how I only made a small little X. Don't make big lines because they're just other stuff that we're going to have to grind off. We don't want to have any black lines showing at all on our finished product. I've drawn out a three quarter inch circle and I'm going down to the uh, drill press and this is basically what we would do. We're removing what would have been a damaged area. So we've drilled just through the top surface and down into the material just a little bit but make sure you don't go all the way through. Absolutely imperative. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a small thin little piece of like aluminum and we're going to dig out the material until we can see the bottom surface. We're going to lay out a two and a quarter inch circle. We're going to make sure that we've got the proper disc, a nice fine disc, so white based disc. We're going to go over to our grinding table. We're going to fire it up and very gently, slowly, uh, we're going to work from the outer edge in. You can see how I'm touching it and moving in towards the center. Okay, and so we want to take our time here. Uh, ultimately, we want to make that outer circle that we've made just disappear so that we end up with nothing but the, uh, the ground material. And what we're doing is we want to go through that top layer, so the top bias layer, and we want to keep going just enough so that we can start to see the, the uh, 
uh, 12 ounce straight cut fiber, which is underneath. So you can see those layers in there. Once we're fully down through that layer, uh, so we've gone down about six thousandths of an inch, what we're going to do is we're going to set the um, grinder up with the smaller one inch mandrel. So again, use the tools, back the, um, the collet out, and then retighten it up once we put the one inch in. Again, make sure that you've got a fine tip or a fine um, grit sander in there. Yeah, get that down. And then we're going to lay out the inner circle, which is inch and a half. We're going to bring it back to the sanding table, turn it on, and very gently, again, don't use a lot of speed, nice and slow and easy, uh, from the outside edge in, and again, make that black line disappear as we're going around. And we're going to go through that straight cut layer and be looking for the change as it goes back into bias, which is the next layer down below. It's kind of, it's not very thick, again, about six thou, so we want to take our time. Don't use a lot of speed and don't use a lot of pressure. Light, light pressure on the grinding disc and relatively slow-ish speeds because, again, we don't want to take any more material than we have to, just enough to get down into that bias layer. Okay, once it's all nicely and consistent, turn the machine off, back to the table, and next thing we want to do is we're going to put in the plug. So we would put a repair plug. So we've cut some plugs so that they fit. You can see here it's going to fit down inside. We're going to push it down till it's bottomed, and then using something like a blade, we'd cut it perfectly flush. If you're lucky, it falls out, but if not, you've got to very gently just lift it up a little bit to get the plug out. And the next thing we're going to do is mix up some more epoxy, full two-minute mix, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add micro balloons to it to get it to basically the consistency of a uh, little bit, a little bit uh, thinner than toothpaste. But we want it to be, you know, relatively thick. And we're going to use this as our binding agent that's going to connect that uh, uh, plug that we just cut. We're going to uh, allow it to connect both to the bottom skin of the uh, repair. It's going to tie the sides in and it's going to uh, basically fill any gaps between the plug and the material. And then we're going to do our patch repair on top of that. So full two minute mix. Then what we're going to do is go back and we're going to put in uh, a certain amount of grams. So we're going to add those micro balloons. We want it sort of the consistency of you know, sort of runny toothpaste. So let's let's have a look. <clears throat> there it is. See, it's got some, yeah, it's kind of nice and thick, but not so thick that it, it won't kind of be able to be moved around. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill that hole completely full of material, making sure that the sides get fully connected. I got a little too much in there, so I'm going to scoop out. But I want about a third of that hole filled with the uh, mixture. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to butter up the edges of the uh, plug and the bottom so that when we put it in we're absolutely assured that everything is going to connect giving us a good solid uh, connection between the two. I'm going to work it down in there nice and slow and easy. The excess material should come out the sides which is perfect. We're going to get a cloth, just wipe the excess and what we should see is the central core with just a white ring around it. That's, that's just about perfect. Look at that, fully seated, nice, complete connection all the way around the outside. Now we're going to go back to the freezer, pick up our pre-pregs, take them out of the bag, and it's not a bad idea, lay them out on the uh, countertop for a minute or two, just let them kind of thaw out a little bit. Okay, and so make sure you've got all, let's see, three and three should be six pieces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lay them in two of the little three-quarter inches, uh, to cap our core and then we're going to tie in our first layer of bias on the inch and a half, straight cut the two and a quarter and the final repair on the top we're going to put on the 45 because it's going to tie directly to that top layer of bias material. So very carefully take the plastic off the top and the bottom. And now we've got our little prepreg piece of fiberglass. Going to very carefully whoops, lay it on top, make sure it's properly planted and centered. One at 45 and one at 90 is a, probably a pretty good idea. It's not really tying into anything, so it's not critical. If you end up with damage to your material, you can use the other little three-quarter inch and cut it to fill any uh, 
uh, areas where you've actually uh, gone right through all the layers into the styrofoam so we can use it as a repair piece. Okay, so the next layer is going to be our inch and a half. It's going to be attaching to a bias layer, so we want the uh, warp fibers on the 45 so that it ties directly to the uh, bias sheet that it's that it's connected to. The next layer is going to be on the straight cut section, so we're going to lay our warp fibers on the 0 or 90. Okay, and so we're going to make sure they're straight. We're going to fit that inside so it connects to the uh, straight cut. And then our top layer, oh, look at that, a little bit of uh, inclusion there. We want to get rid of that, a little bit of hair. Okay, make sure everything's nice and set up. And then our final capping layer, which is going to attach to our bias sheet that's on top. So we're going to put it on the 45, make sure that it's properly attached and seated just right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with a layer of perforated ply. And then we're going to use, just you can use anything as a breather bleeder. So in this case, we're going to use some fiberglass. We're going to make sure that that comes in contact with our bleeder uh, in the, the vacuum bag. We're going to put some plastic on top of that and finally cover it with a cull plate. So we Put some breather on top of that, move the whole nine yards onto our um, flat surface. We're going to stick that inside our Ziploc bag. We're going to cut little corner uh, X's in the center of our vacuum bases, which notice they've got a uh, breather that makes sure it makes contact with the main breather on the plate. Then we're going to uh, attach our vacuum. You can see how quickly that sucks in nice and tight. Check it 